In this video we're going to look at what is typically the last stage in the process with any job and that is to save the toolpath data into a format that you can run on your CNC machine to cut the part. So I can show you this, I will need to have a part with some toolpaths in it open so I'm just going to click on open an existing file and select the widget 24x24 toolpath file from the project folder. So here we can see a file that we've designed in another tutorial and if we click on the icon to go over to the toolpaths tab we can see we have a set of toolpaths that have already been calculated. Now we would only save these toolpaths out to our CNC machine once we were 100% confident that they were correct. In the software we use the preview function to allow us to see what the toolpath is going to look like when it's cut and then the only other thing is just to make sure that as you go along you're using feeds and speeds and settings that are appropriate for the material that you're planning to cut, the tooling you have available and your particular machine setup. So in this case let's just preview these toolpaths so we can see what we're working with. So we'll click on the preview toolpaths icon, preview all toolpaths, animate those through so we can see the part that we're actually going to create with the set of toolpaths that we've got. Here, just so we can look, we have a pocketing operation with an end mill, then we have two toolpaths cutting the text and the hatch with a v-bit, and then another two operations that also use an end mill as well, and that will be important to us as we come to save the toolpath out. Here though, I'm going to assume that we're completely happy that this is ready to go, so we can close the preview, and we can come up, and the icon to save the toolpaths is here. This is the fourth icon along on the last row of icons under the toolpath operations. If we just click on that, that will take us into the Save Toolpaths form. There are two ways to select the toolpaths that I'd like to save. If we come to the top here, you can see there's a box that I can check, which is called Output All Visible Toolpaths to One File. If this is unchecked, then I can choose any single toolpath from the list in order to save it. So I need to make sure it's the selected toolpath. This is showing me at the moment Profile Cutout is my selected toolpath, so that's the one that would be saved if I hit the Save Toolpaths button at the moment. To choose a different one, we just click on the one we want to save from the list. So this is the default setting where I want to just output a single toolpath at a time from the software. In some cases, it's advantageous for me to output multiple toolpaths into a single file. To do that, I need to check the box up the top here now notice this says it's going to output all visible toolpaths. At the moment I have no visible toolpaths. The visible toolpaths are indicated by putting a checkbox into this location next to the tool's name. So let's imagine that I want to output the two uh, toolpaths that use the 90 degree v-bit in a single file. Then I could check the box here and check the box here. Now the software is showing me that list and so I would be outputting into a single file two toolpaths that use the same tool. So when I ran those on the CNC machine, it would cut the first one, then it would go ahead and immediately cut the second one without stopping and requiring me to send a new file to it. So very, very useful way of grouping toolpaths together if they share a common tool. The other time that this option is useful to me is if I have a tool changer and I want to output multiple toolpaths using different tools to the same file. We'll come back to that in a moment. Let's just go ahead and uncheck the visibility for these two toolpaths. I'm going to select the pocket toolpath and I'm going to uncheck the option at the top here again so that now we're just going to be outputting this single toolpath here. So once we've selected the toolpath or toolpaths that we want to output, the next stage is to make sure that we have the correct post processor selected. The post processor is the file that's going to convert the information from the software into a format that your machine tool can understand. So to choose the appropriate post, we click on the down arrow and we can access the list that's available here. To help us navigate this list, we can hit the first letter of the name of the one we want to select from the keyboard and that will take us down to that selection or that section so we can access it. If I hit G, in this case, we'll go back up to the section here that starts with the standard G code posts. And in my case, I'm just going to choose standard G code inch post processor. Once I'm happy that I've got the right post and that I've got the right toolpath or toolpaths in my list of toolpaths to be saved here, then I can click on the Save Toolpath button 
and I just navigate to the appropriate folder and give that whichever name I want to give it. By default it will pick up the name of the toolpath itself so it can be quite useful if you develop some consistency in the way that you name your toolpaths because you might be able to transfer that directly over to the files you're saving to send to the CNC. In this case I'm not going to hit save because I don't actually want to save this file or cut it so we'll just hit the cancel button and this would be the same process for what we were looking at before if we had multiple toolpaths selected. So if I had the output all visible toolpaths option checked, switch on the visibility of the two that I want to save there, then now when I hit the save toolpaths button I get the option to save a single file that contains both those toolpaths. And that's only possible because they share the same tool geometry and the same tool number. Now if your post processor has tool changer support and if you have a tool changing machine it is possible to save tool paths that use different tool geometry into a single file because the machine will take care of that tool changing. To do this we just check all the tools we wanted to use. Now you'll notice there that the software has given me an error at this stage because it says the visible toolpaths use different tools and the selected post processor does not support tool changing. So the first thing I need to do is change my post processor to one that has the tool changing ability in it. So if I click the down arrow here we'll just change to a standard G code ATC which is fairly typical um, nomenclature for automatic tool changer if we select that there. Now my post processor is OK but now I'm getting a different error. It's telling me that some of the toolpaths use the same tool number but have different tool geometry and that would not be possible if I was outputting these or it certainly could cause me a problem on my machine because that's unlikely to be the case that I'm looking for. So what I need to do is make sure that if I have different tool geometry I need to use a different tool number. So in this case let's just close this for a moment and look at our toolpaths. I can see if I hover over the first one it's a quarter inch M mil tool number one hover over the second one it's a 90 degree V bit also tool number one so what I'm going to do is just double click that toolpath edit the tool change that to tool two it would have to match the position in my tool changer we'll just use tool two for example hit OK and then recalculate that toolpath and then do the same with this one because that also uses that 90 degree V bit changing the tool, hit calculate and now if we hover over these I can see tool 1 and these are both using tool 2. So if we close this, come back to the save toolpath option here, now you can see I'm not getting any errors. I can see the tool number displayed for me in parentheses here and I can see that now the software is happy because tool 1 is my quarter inch M mil and tool 2 is my 90 degree V bit and everything is satisfying the parameters that I need to save these into a single file using this automatic tool changing post processor. So again I'll just hit save, give this a name and save that out. And You'll notice by default when I've got multiple toolpaths like this with different tools the software is just going to use the name of the file itself. Again I can just edit that to be whatever I want and to save that into any folder I want. So just to reiterate it's only possible to use this tool changing output if your machine has that capability and if the post processor using has those commands built into it. So if we just close the save toolpaths form there that concludes this video on the different options you can use when saving out your toolpaths to run on your CNC.